Two. All right, so we get the equation equal to zero. We make sure it's in descending order, and then we factor it. What's the very first thing you look for when you're factoring? GCF. Okay. What do you do after you've done the GCF? Number of terms. You count terms. Based on the answer to how many terms it has, if there are two terms, what are we going to look to do? Yeah, that's right. Difference of squares. I'm just going to abbreviate. There are three terms. <coughs> X method. Same things we've done before. And then the four terms. Grouping. We know the process. You gotta get better at execution. Okay. Once you've factored the the polynomial that's there, the last thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna set each factor equal to zero and solve. Okay. Do several examples of this, and I think you'll see. You know, it, it's not that bad. The factoring is the hard part. The solving of the equations they should be easy. You guys are a lot better at solving equations now than you were when we did it in chapter three. <laughs> None of these equations will be any harder than the ones we used in chapter three. Okay, so let's look at an example to start off with. Example A: solve. Is the instructions? And let's say we had 2x squared plus 8x equals 0. Something pretty simple to start off with. And we want to run through that process of things that we have to make sure of if we're going to solve this by factoring. The reason I know I need to solve this by factoring is look at the exponent on the x. The biggest one is what? Squared. So it's got a degree higher than 1. That's how you know you got to factor. Okay. Because on the benchmark, on the EOC, they're just going to give you an equation and say solve it. If you don't see an x squared, then you don't have to factor to solve it. If it's got an x squared or an x to the third power or something like that, you got to think, oh, i got to factor this. So you see that exponent, it tells you to, that's what gives you the information to factor that. So the next thing is to get it equal to what? Is it already equal to zero? Is there a zero on the other side? Yeah. So that's already done. This one we started out with it equal to zero at the beginning. That happens a lot. Okay. The next thing to do is check for descending order. Is the left side, the side that's not zero, is it in descending order? Yeah, we got x squared and then plain x. So that's in descending order. Okay. The next thing to do is factor it. How do we factor that? First thing we do. Greatest common factor. What is the greatest common factor? 2x. What's that leave in parentheses? Plus four. All right, then we want to look at the parentheses and say, can I factor that any further? There's not an x squared on it, so there's nothing else to do to it. The last thing you want to do, all we had to do was a GCF on this one. So the last thing you're going to do is set each factor equal to what? Zero. So we're going to set 2x equal to zero x plus 4 equal to 0. And solve each of those. How do we solve this one? 2x is equal to 0. Divide by 2. x is 0. Because 0 divided by anything is 0, right? How do we solve this one? Track 4. x equals negative 4. We got two answers. The degree was 2. And we got two answers. That's what should happen. That's what we're going to see today. Whatever the degree of the problem was, that's how many answers we should have. Hey, Boyd, could you shut that door for us? It's a little cool. All right, so let's look at this one. X squared plus 12 is equal to positive 7X. <laughs> What's the first thing I should do? <coughs> Get it equal to what? 
How do I do that? Subtract the 7x. I can subtract the 7x and in one step have it equal to zero, right? So minus 7x is going to cancel out on that side. And I look to see if there are any like terms to the minus 7, and there aren't. The minus 7x, there's no plain x's over here. So I know it's just going to go in the middle there because I want to get the left side in what order? Descending order. So I've got x squared minus 7x plus 12. Now it's equal to zero. So I got x squared minus 7x plus 12 is equal to zero. And I want to try to factor that to solve it. I know I need to factor because I got x squared in the problem. Okay. How do I factor that? X method, because there's not a GCF. There's nothing in front of the x squared. So 12 had to be negative 7. Good. Negative 4, negative 3. Negative 4 multiplies to be, or times negative 3 multiplies to be positive 12, and adds to be negative 7. Can I take a shortcut on my factoring? Why? Nothing in front of that x squared, so that's x minus 4, x minus 3 equals 0. Now, what do I do with each of those factors? Last thing. Make them equal 0 and solve. So I add 4. So x equals positive 4. x equals positive 3. All right. Not bad. So not the, once you get the, the factoring done, the solving's the easy part. That's the part that you should just zip through. The factoring's the tougher part. And that's where we gotta just get better. 3x squared plus 3x equals 18 plus 2x squared. So a little bit more going on in this problem than we had in the first couple. But still, same idea. We want to get it equal to what? Zero. Okay. One of the things that you want to make sure you try to do is get the, the leading term, that first term, or whatever the highest exponent is. Try to make it positive if possible. Okay. So if I want to keep the x squared being positive, do I want to move the 3x squared or the 2x squared? Yeah, I want to move the 2x squared because if I subtract 3 from 2, I get a negative answer. So subtracting 2 from 3 is going to get me positive x squared. If I'm taking two steps to do this, you know, I would be fine if you did, did it in one step. That's fine. You're going to do both. Because what else do I have to do? Subtract 18. And I would be fine with you doing that in the first step, too, at the same time. That's not a big thing, but I'm just taking an extra step here. So there's the equals zero now. And I have x squared plus 3x minus 18. Is that in descending order? Yes. So if it's in descending order, I'm ready to try to factor it. Is there a greatest common factor? No. So what method am I going to use to factor? All right. All right. So, what method we use is X method because it's three terms. Negative 18 goes on top. What goes on the bottom? 3. 
So we need two numbers that multiply to be negative 18 and add to be positive 3. 6 and negative 3. Can I take a shortcut? Yeah. X plus 6. X minus 3. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, what do I do with each of those factors? Make them equal zero. And then I would subtract six, that's right. And then I would add three. I got my two answers. Too bad. Too bad. Four X squared is equal to twenty five. A little bit different, but not much. What's the first thing we're trying to do? Get it equal to zero. The four X squared is positive where it's at, so we don't want to move it. So we need to move what? How do we move it? Subtract. There's going to give me equal zero. I have 4x squared minus 25. Is there a GCF? No. There are how many terms? Two. So we're trying to do this by what? Difference of squares. What squared gives me 4x squared? Two and an x. What squared gets me 25? Five. So my factors would be what? Good, good. Yeah, 2x. One's a plus and one's a minus. Doesn't matter what order you put those in. 2x is in the front, 5's in the back. One's plus, one's a minus. What do we do with each of those factors? Set them equal to zero. Hardest equations we've done so far, but still not very difficult. Track 5, 2x equals negative 5, divide by 2, negative 5 over 2. This one, add 5, divide by 2, positive 5 over 2. Don't change it to a decimal, don't make it a mixed number. Leave it as that. All right, not too bad. There's a difference of squares example. Let's go to example E. I'll just put it over here to the side of that. 3x squared equals negative 8x minus 4. What do I need to do to this one? And what else? Yeah, I'm going to add 8x and I'm going to add 4 to move them over there with the 3x squared. I'm going to do it in one step here. So these cancel out. There's the equal 0. 3x squared plus 8x plus 4. Why don't I write it in that order? Descending order. And remember, that's what's going on. All right, so is there a GCF of those three? No, so nothing goes into three, eight, and four. Uh, so what are we gonna do? X method. What goes on top? And eight on the bottom. What does that? Six and two. Can I take a shortcut on this one? No. Got something in front of x squared, so I've got to go through this route. Group. What's the GCF of 3x squared and 6x? Three and an x. I'd leave x plus two. And the second pair. 
the GCF of 2x and 4. 2 and then x plus 2. Good. So my factored form is x plus 2, 3x plus 2. So here's the factored form of that. What do we do with each of those? Equal them to zero. So x plus 2 equals zero. Track 2. x is negative 2. 3x plus 2 equals zero. A little bit more work on this one. Divide by 3. x equals negative 2 thirds. Okay. And then we've got our two answers. What that means is I, I can take negative two and plug it back into the, the original problems, check to make sure it worked. Plug it in for x in every place that there's an x and work it out, and it should equal the same thing on each side. I can pl place negative two thirds in the place of x, both sides of the original problem, and it should equal the same thing on each side. So it's an equation. We're solving it. So you can take your answers and plug them back in and and determine if they're correct or not. All right, let's, uh, let's look at this one. Negative 3x squared minus x is equal to negative 2. What do we need to do to this one? If we add 2, that, that gets it equal to 0. But what's the problem that we're going to run into here? Got a negative in front. How could I get rid of that negative in front? I could have added 3x squared in, to the other side, but then I'd have to move everything else too. What's a, maybe a more efficient way? Yeah, I could pull a negative one out of everything, like a GCF, or I could just divide them all by negative one. Since it's just a number that I'm I'm pulling out, I could divide everybody by negative one, even the zero, because it's an equation. Whatever I do to everything on this side, I got to do the same thing over there, right? That's the rules for equations. So if I do that, that changes the signs of everybody. Zero divided by anything, though, is still zero. It doesn't really change signs. There. That gets us the right stuff here, a positive in the front. It can't, <clears throat> it doesn't necessarily mean that it can't be done this way with the negative in front, but it makes it more difficult. And I'm trying to make things easier on myself as much as possible. So dividing everybody by negative one, it just changes the signs of every part of the problem. You'll remember that. You're okay. So then we do the factoring on this. Negative six on top, one on the bottom. What does that? Negative six times negative one. Yeah, that doesn't do it. It's too far apart. Three and negative two. That's what it should be. So we got a positive, we want it to add to be positive one. Three plus negative two is positive one. Three times negative two is still positive six. So it does work there. All right. And then can't do the shortcut because I got something in front. So I'm just going to put three X minus two X in there and group that. What's the GCF of those first two? Easy. Three X. Yeah. X plus one. What's the second two? Kind of two. Negative two. Big big guy, big deal right there that you pull out the negative two. So my factors are three X minus two and X plus one. Set each of those equal to zero. I'll do this one. That's easy. The other one's not too too difficult. Two thirds. 
So x equals two thirds, x equals negative one. When we're finding these, they're, they've got different names. They're called solutions, because they're solving, you get the solutions to the equation. Or it, sometimes they're called zeros, or uh, roots is another name for, for these things that we're finding here. Zeros and roots. It's when you set the problem equal to zero, you're finding a zero of it. If you set it equal to zero, you're finding a root. It's just another name for solution out of that. So that you get uh, kind of mixed in there. Well, let's do one more. Uh, let's say we had toughest one of the day, x to the third, 13x squared plus 30x. And I will be nice and go ahead and have it equal to zero. You want to find the roots of this problem or find the solutions or find the zeros of that problem. There's a greatest common factor of x. That's good. So I'd pull the x out to the front first. What's that leave in the parentheses? Okay. Can I factor this trinomial? How? X method. 30 on top, 13 on the bottom. 10 times 3 is 30. 10 plus 3 is 13. I could take my shortcut. Don't forget, you had the X that Adam said was the GCF at the beginning out there. Now, what do I do? How many of them? All three of them, because this has got an X here. So I'm going to set X equal to zero. That one's the nice one. I don't have to do anything to solve it. Right. It just says x equals zero. That's an answer. X plus 10 equals zero. X plus 3 equals zero. Okay. So that's x equals negative 10. That's x equals negative 3. We got three answers. What was the degree of the original problem? X to the third power. We got three answers on something that had x to the third power on it. That, that always happens that way. Okay. All right. Your assignment for today on page five. This is going to be kind of a lot of different pages, but a few problems on each page because it's a lot of stuff from chapter nine. So page 578, 27 through 38. Page 586, 20 through 28. Page 596, 23 through 37. Page 603, 25 through 39, and uh, it's about 10 on, on each page is about all it is. Some of them are already factored for you. When you get there, you'll see that. that that's already, some of them are already factored. You just got to solve. All right. So that's 11. That's uh, nine. That would be 14, 15 on that one. And then that would be 15. There it is. 11. No, that's 12. 15, 40, 50. About 60 problems, but some of them are already factored for you guys. Guys, you got an hour. None of these took a minute to do. Don't miss. Okay. Six oh three.